All right, well, we've talked about supply and we've talked about demand separately, but we know that in the real world, supply and demand kind of happen together. So what we need to do now is to start talking about what happens when we put them together. All right, the graphs for them have stayed the same. Supply is still an increasing function. Demand is still a decreasing function. It's just that now when you put them together, it starts to make sense. Right? Before we were sort of talking about this quantity supplied, quantity demanded, change in supply, change in demand. Basically what we're trying to do is to get to this though. Because what we have right here is supply and demand in the same graph and the intersection here, that's known as equilibrium. right? Equal equilibrium is where supply and demand are the same, and the price that's at equilibrium, I'll often write it P with a subscript E to denote equilibrium, this is the price that would keep supply and demand constant, right? So you would supply the same amount that everyone else would demand. So in other words, there wouldn't be changes in inventory, right? People wouldn't have to be worrying about selling out of something or having a warehouse get too full of leftover goods they haven't sold yet, right? And if you want to know what the quantity that you would produce at equilibrium, you just take that point and drop it down to your quantity curve. Now, this is equilibrium. Well, if Guterres Paribus were set, this is where we would sit all the time, right? Unfortunately, that's not happening in the real world, right? What's happening is that supply and demand are shifting all over the time because Guterres Paribus isn't being held, right? So what we have are non-price determinate changes. And it's your job as a student to tell me, or you know, the general public and as a whole, what happens when you start changing certain factors in a market. So, in other words, let's go back to the corn market. I love the corn market. It's my favorite. So let's assume that something changes, a non-price determinant changes in corn. And let's suppose that uh, what happens is... We increase the number of sellers, or we increase the number of people who grow corn. So let's suppose that all of a sudden they create a new type of corn seed that can grow in snow. So now, instead of only being able to grow in the summer, all of those Midwestern states that where, where everybody just sorts of hangs out in the snow and freezes to death, instead they'll start growing corn. All right. So we increase the number of people that are selling corn, or at least the number of times you can sell corn. Well, what happens when you increase the number of sellers? Well, this is one of those non-price determinants for supply, right? The number of sellers is increasing, so supply increases. The supply curve moves to the right. Here is our new supply curve with the dashed line. Now, you probably can see right away what should happen. The question is, how do we get there? What we're going to do is move to our new equilibrium. How do we get there, though? Does it just happen automatically? Is it some you know, magic occurs and, and we get there? No. What happens is that initially the supply increases. So we'll, we'll start growing corn in the winter. And we'll have extra corn hanging out. What will happen initially is that the price doesn't change. The price actually stays fixed at the old equilibrium value. But what happens at this old price for demand and supply? Well, what happens is that we keep demanding this amount of goods, but at that price, this is how much we want to supply. So what happens is that our supply all of a sudden is greater than our demand. What happens when supply is greater than demand? Surplus. Surplus. This We have a surplus of corn. So basically the, the, grain, the granaries are getting all of this corn stuffed in at this price and they're like, oh crap, we can't sell all of this corn. What are we going to do? Well, what happens when you have a surplus? What happens when you have stuff hanging out in the racks forever and ever and ever at a, at a regular store? Sales. Basically what ends up happening is that when you have surpluses, the price starts to decrease. Okay? And what happens is that the, the price decreases along the demand curve until it gets down to its new equilibrium point. And when it gets to the new equilibrium point, 
the price, this new equilibrium price that you've created, will stop the growth, stop the surplus, stop the growth in your inventories getting bigger. Right? So it's, it's a multi-step process. So the first thing that happens is that supply increases. And in parentheses, I'll say shift to the right. The supply will shift almost instantaneously. I mean, that's how it works, right? All of a sudden, the corn hits the market. Bam. The prices don't change right away. They're still pretty quick, right? But for a little while, we'll have this surplus. And since you have a surplus, what ends up next is price falls. And what happens when the price of a good falls? Well, don't say that demand increases. That's the wrong thing to say. When demand increases, then the demand curve is shifting. No, that's not what's happening. All that's happening is the price falls. And when the price changes, the quantity demanded increases until we get to our new equilibrium point where supply and demand are the same again. That's how price changes work and how shifts in supply and demand eventually lead to new equilibrium prices and new equilibrium quantities. Right? Notice that we're going to be selling more corn when we have more suppliers. Of course, they'll be selling it at a lower price. All right, that's example number one. Let's take a look at another one. So let's, ch let's allow something else to change this time. So we've done one in supply, let's try one in demand, and let's try, again, a relatively easy one. So let's say that um, the opposite side of the coin happens. The number of buyers increases. What's going to happen now? Well, things haven't changed. We still have supply and demand. We're still dealing with our price and quantity here, and this would be our equilibrium price. When the number of buyers increases, buyers, that's demand. This is a non-price determinant of demand. Therefore, our first step is demand increases. And what does an increase happen? Shift to the right. So our demand shifts to the right. Move the whole curve. Now what happens? Well, our price, again, doesn't change. We're going to be sitting at our old equilibrium price. And at our old equilibrium price, this is how much we'll supply. This is how much we'll demand. Demand is greater than supply. What happens when demand is greater than supply? Shortage. So in this case, if it's corn, the number of people who are buying corn goes up, then we start having a shortage. So the granaries start to lose all their corn. There's nothing in their storage, in their storage bins, and they start going, uh-oh, this is a problem. Well, what happens when you start, sh you start having a shortage? Well, you increase the price. Whenever you start running out of things, in order to make sure you don't run out of them again, you raise the price a little bit. And again, the price rises along the supply curve. All right? The price is being driven up by the suppliers because these demand people are keeping saying, we want it, we want it, we want it, give, it more, give us more. And they're like, well, if you want more, I can't produce more right away, so I'm just going to raise the price. Now, after the price goes up, what do the suppliers start doing? Ah. Now you're getting the hang of it, right? Increase in quantity supplied. Again, don't tell me that the supply increases, because if you tell me the supply increases, then I think the supply curve has grown, and I'll... That's not true. The supply curve has not grown. All we've done is risen the price. The price has gone up. And so people are going to produce more if they can. So the quantity supplied will go up until, again, we get to our new equilibrium point. All right. So there's your first step. I think the next video will be trying to work with a couple of the more complicated non-price determinants 
for supply and demand, but this is a good start to get us going.